Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Let's just have a big ol' complain fest and talk about new items that are overhyped, overpriced, and just don't work. So we're just gonna dish. I'm gonna tell you all of my real feelings, my very real, raw feelings about some new things that I've tried that just don't meet the hype. They don't perform very well. I don't really like them, and this is just a good old fails video, except for this is not stuff that I've like randomly tried and I've saved up and there's the bad bin. You guys know that whole drill. I used to have like behind me like a dedicated pull out bin overflowing of like all the garbage products that I've tried. And then like every once in a while I'd do a video. This is rare because I recently went on a couple of trips and I brought with me new stuff to play with and try while not filming and Dear God, that was a mistake. Um, but I've really discovered new items that just were underwhelming that I don't like. And if you like them, that's your prerogative, you know, and I don't like them and that's mine. So I always kind of like to start these videos with the disclaimer of this is makeup and skincare and hair care and it's fun. And it is not, you know, anything that should be taken too seriously. So with my opinion and review of products, take it with a grain of salt and always do your own investigation. But most of this stuff is total garbage, so. Yeah. Class is in session. I just need my glasses right now is how I feel. You know what's not a fail? Blazers. Right now it's springtime and I usually would like never be into blazers, but I am so into them right now. What are your favorite brands? This is one that I got like years and years and years ago. This is Zadig, um, but I have some from Zara. I have Lewis, I think is a brand that I discovered that's a little pricey, but like really, really great. Anyway, long story short, like a good blazer. Oh, I'm loving it. It's like my thing. Random time with Tati. You know what else is a fail? Wait, let's, let's, can we just talk about the elephant in the room? Because my voice is so off right now because I am so oddly stuffy and it has nothing to do with being sick and everything to do with whatever is floating around in the air in my backyard. Like, oh my gosh, I cannot handle it. It's like spring just like smacked me in the face just over the past couple of days. And I'm on the Claritin train and I don't like being that way. Like I don't like taking things on the regular, but I'm having the worst allergies this season. Anybody else? Like I feel like my voice is weird. If she sounds a little stuffy, blame nature. Okay, so let's get started. Speaking of nature, Mac came out with a very, very cute collection. It is a cherry blossom themed collection and I love the packaging. I'm deceased for the packaging. I'm dying, sneezing because of allergies and just, oh, so sick. It's really, really cute, right? Like this is the cutest ever. Some of the stuff in the collection, as far as lipsticks and lip glosses, it's gonna be color preference, but they're standard MAC formula and they are so pretty just to look at. So if you like the shades and you're into a MAC lip gloss or lipstick, they're totally a-okay. They have a mini shadow palette that is really nice for travel. I tried this, it had a huge spray over and you know that goes away really, really quick. And I was actually super hoping that the blush underneath would be just absolutely creamy and fabulous but this is the weirdest blush shade i'm pretty fair you know so like this is more highlighty but then it would be like a pink chalk strip highlight and even on very fair porcelain ivory skin i still feel like the way that this pink translates comes off more chalky powder like pink chalk and not like a rosy kiss of color like it's just a very strange texture and color for a blush in my opinion. This was the one item that I was like, ooh. Lorac recently came out with new eyeshadow palettes. I have two of them in front of me. I believe they have three or four. The colors are nice. I mean, it's nothing to get like so excited over. It's not a revolutionary palette. And really at this point, what is? I mean, the blue blood pla- blah, blah, can I talk? Jesus Christ, help me. Blue blood, oh my God, why is that so hard to say? Ah! Jeffrey's Blue Blood Palette. And then even the, the blood sugar, like those were pretty different, 
but everything else is kind of run of the mill, run of the mill, plums, a little shimmer. Like it's kind of the same thing over and over and over. I was kind of hoping maybe with Lorac, maybe they'd punch it up a little bit, do something similar how Huda has like the different colors, like the green, the orange, the purple. This just all of them felt so basic and just like the formula is okay. Some people will enjoy it. I'm not one of those people. I want more payoff and I want more fantasy with my makeup even if we're in the neutral zone. Also, the clunkiness of this is just a huge turnoff, so bye uh, bye Don't I seem like more mean and bossy with a blazer on? I feel bossy. I'm just like, I'm not gonna play nice. I'm gonna just tell you everything sucks. No, I think we get so wrapped up in like, I'm not trying to offend you, but let me tell you that I'm not trying to offend you. It's okay to feel how you feel. Like, of course it's okay to feel how you feel about products or anything in your life. Like soul search for every and anything that you want, whether it's your diet, exercise, spirituality, sexuality, um, job, makeup taste, hobby taste, whatever. Like don't let anyone else dictate that for you. But if you happen to have similarities with someone and you value similar things, like it can be interesting to hear their take on something, you know? So I think these videos can be super, super helpful if you are in line with the person's value system of what they look for. She's bossy. Wait, isn't there a song like that? Dun, dun, dun. I'm bossy. I actually say that to my sisters all the time. I have three sisters and I'm like, hey, I'm not bossy. I'm a boss. And they're like, can you just shut up about that? Like, geez, stop it. <laughs> they put me in line real fast. It's actually so funny. I'm so like the odd man out sometimes with my sisters in makeup and like, I'll be like, well, I can give you my opinion on lip gloss. Okay, so moving on. This is very much to me a through and through overhyped item. So many people love this, and that's why I went out and purchased it. This was not PR. This was me specifically watching several videos, and I went to Sephora, and I was like, this is gonna be the best. And now, keep in mind, I fully understand that you take a gamble because products can perform so differently on different skin types, specifically skincare foundation. So I'm not mad about it. I just really don't like this. And I was like, why is everyone like losing their crap over this? Like it's not even anything special. This is the Becca Skin Love Weightless Blur Foundation. It says that it's infused with glow nectar brightening complex. I don't really know what that is, but it sounds cool. This comes in 24 shades. That's really great. It does look like they have a great shade range. This has a medium to buildable coverage. No no, no. Okay, this is so interesting because so many people are like, oh my gosh, I love this, life changing. And then I see a review right here that says, I'm so glad I was given a sample of this foundation before I purchased it because it emphasized my pores. I had the same experience and it looked greasy. My issue with this is it wouldn't build. I couldn't get any more than like a very light tinted moisturizer type of a coverage. And I used it two ways. I wore it on its own for like quick out the door makeup. And then I also did it over contour and highlight the technique that Scott Barnes taught me. And both ways looked pretty terrible. I still used primer underneath. I did my pore filling. And for whatever reason, this foundation just made my pores look giant. Now I have seen it on other people and it looks beautiful. So this could just be a very personal me issue, but it is one of those that if you see this hyped up so big my recommendation would be go to sephora and get a sample they are so willing and happy to help you with that and probably even more so if you're chatting with the team there which they all love youtube and anytime i go and i speak with any of the employees at sephora which i love because i'm like you love makeup just as much as i do and like it's like we have like this thing if you are in the need to find that perfect thing for you and it can be sampled sample it. That way you can see if something oxidizes, if it looks weird in daylight, if it tingles on your skin, if you like the way it blends. And it's really important, I think. So sample away. I have to talk about this. This was the sassiest note that I've ever received in PR. <gasps> oh my God, we're going there. I kind of took this personally because I got it maybe a week-ish after I posted my silicone coated sponge situation that does look an awful lot like a beauty blender. But to me, it's just kind of an enhanced beauty blender. Like I really love this. I will link the video below, not sponsored at all. They are an indie brand through and through. They are pre-selling. I just really like it. So a lot of people have come along and they have made their own version of a beauty sponge. 
that's been going on for a very, very long time. And it sucks, you know, that you come up with an idea in the marketplace and someone else will be like, oh, well, so-and-so is doing that. And then trends happen. Innovation is always based off of something that already exists. You know, you're taking this baseline here and you're like, how do we make this better? You know, even like I always think about my product Halo and I'm like, okay, I'm not the only hair, skin, nail vitamin out there. How could I make this better? What makes this stand out? So to me, like this stands out, it's better. Um, Beauty Blender's having a hard time with this right now and they were like shading real techniques on um, Instagram. Someone would say something spicy and then Beauty Blender would come right back in and be like, oh yeah? We'll take this and they'd like get right back in it. It just put a bad taste in my mouth and I hate saying that because Beauty Blender is like one of my ride or die items and it always will be. Like I'll keep using it. I like it. I love their foundation. Um, I've been very open in the past about things of theirs that I don't like. Um, so, you know, it's been kind of hit and miss, but I like what I like. Okay, so I got sent this card and like a bunch of beauty blenders and it says, they say imitation is the highest form of flattery. Well, we are pretty damn flattered by all of the wannabe applicators out there. What the queen? always shreds the competition, the first, the best, the original beauty blender. Was that necessary beauty blender? You like went there. The queen always shreds the competition. Are we in Game of Thrones right now? It's a makeup sponge. I would say to brands like don't engage, like don't do that on social. It's not a cute look. Everybody does it different clearly, but that, that has the sponge drama has just been like very, very funny to me. Okay, what do we have? We have also from Stila. This is going to shock you because I love Stila Magnificent Metals so, so much. They have been a favorite of mine. I rave about them nonstop. Now these ones right here are the newer Shade Mystery. And you know what? I don't want a mystery <laughs> when I am meeting just like a little bit of gold on my eye. So that is the problem I have with this is it really is a shade mystery. You'll think that you're just being like, and a little touch of gold and like some weird like burgundy part will like come out. These kind of drove me nuts. The colors were not that great. This one I was expecting to love the most. It's called Hypnotic and it just on the eyes looked really unflattering. Like do you see how like that looks right there? Like it just looked like black patchy, not into it. And then we have this one right here, Enigmatic. It's the same thing where you have these like inconsistent areas through here. Not for me, I'll stick with the originals. Wonderlust is my favorite. I love that one so much. They do also have this little guy right here called Silver Lake. I liked this when I first got it. I used it quite a bit. You know, I love their putty items, but once I started using the Fenty one, this kind of was too chunky and moved out of the way. So I will let you guys know they are very different. If you as a consumer are looking at the Fenty 24 karat and you're looking at something like this, they're very different. They look similar. They have a similar squishy putty feel. The Fenty is more a wet, soft glimmer. The Stila is more in your face. I'm just not the biggest fan of the Stila one. Moving right along. Pores Be Gone Matte Primer with Fig Extract from First Aid Beauty. They just came out with a couple of primers. I wanna try the other ones. This is the only one I have put to the test and I was hoping that it would be a pore minimizer that was not as thick as the Tarte you know, pore filler. I did not like this. It did not smooth or blur as much as I needed it to. It was just way too liquidy. So you can see right here, it just does not do what a thicker blurring primer will. So it's really rare to find a lotiony primer that will fill in those pores and not pill off the skin and look a little crazy underneath your makeup. I don't know, I couldn't get this one to work for me, not a fan and I'll try the others and I will let you guys know. Um, I also wanna tell you guys, this is so sad. By Terry was very, very generous and they sent over a ton of lip products. Now I really enjoy their foundations, um, some of their face products, liquid bronzers. They have really beautiful stuff within the line and it's all very, very luxurious. And it has this classic rose scent. I wore these a few times and I really tried to get past it and I just could not. It is such a shame because the smoothness of this item is unparalleled. It is, the formula is so, so, so nice. 
but when it dries, it still smells like baby powder rose and it stays there for hours. You're tasting it, you're smelling it. It's just all day long. It is there and it will give me a headache every single time to the point of needing to take the product off. And I'm so bummed about that because these are super, super beautiful. If you don't care about that kind of fragrance and it doesn't bug you and you like the whole, you know, rose fragrance type of a thing, these are magnificent. They have a few different finishes and they are really pretty. The color selection is giant. Last but not least, welcome to the worst hair day of my life. This thing was leaking everywhere. So like I put it in, oops, I put it in a shoe bag to bring into here. IGK is one of my favorite, favorite hair care brands. So let me just like say that first. Like I don't hate IGK. I actually really, really love, they have a volumizer that is just like the best. They have good sprays for smoothing out your hair before a blowout. They have great texturizers and dry shampoos. So like there's a lot in their line that I really, really love. I hate bringing negativity to a brand that I do really like. That is tough for me, but this was just one of those things that like I have to tell you guys because this was literally the worst and it really makes your hair feel like you have dumped sand and texturizer and dry shampoo. Like literally I was blowing out my hair and I was like, Ew! like struggling because, and that's the, that's the attractive noise that I make. Ew! I was struggling to get my brush through my hair, even though I had spray and conditioner and I conditioned the ends. And you know, I was on Snapchat, my hair was like out to here and I'm like, I would just use the worst shampoo of my life. And then I was complaining on Twitter. I was like, I just entered a new dimension because my eyes are burning. And that's the other thing. This has such like a eucalyptus-y peppermint type of a thing that when you're rinsing it out and you're like really rinsing it because it is so gritty, it will get in your eyes. Like even just the scent of it is like will burn your nostrils. Once I did finally rinse it, my hair felt sticky, tacky, and gross. This is why we're in a bun yet again. But it just, oh my gosh, I don't understand. If you would like a good gritty, but not wreck your hair type of a scrub your scalp, stick with Brio Gio, the one that smells like a Girl Scout cookie, like a Thin Mint. It smells so yummy. That one I've been using for years. This I was curious about. It seemed a little more aggressive and I was like, well, maybe more is more. Like maybe it'll really like get in there. Um, but no, it kind of just to me is like dandruff in a bottle. Oh, here's an update. Okay, on my nails, I am wearing the Orly Glow Stick. Now, some of you guys are like, this is the best thing ever. Thanks for recommending it. And this is not sponsored. Um, this is just like the second time that I've worn it. And Orly, in my opinion, makes the best neons. They go on really well. But you do need to use a white base with any neon. Just try it, I am telling you. Even just one coat will allow you to have like a slightly milky base to work with. And then it will make that neon just like shine. It will just make it really, really glowy. I made it through this video. Yes, uh, I really wanted to share with you guys as soon as I could some of these newer items that just recently launched that really did not do it for me. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you wanna see more videos like this, where we're just, you know, getting down and dirty and talking about things that don't work because sometimes that just needs to happen too. I do majority positive, but there's a little room for constructive criticism here on my channel. And if you wanna see more of that, give this video a thumbs up, leave me comments, share the video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, take a moment and do that for good luck. And for even more luck, ring the freaking bell. You'll be notified of my upcoming videos. I might be talking more crap about products. I might be opening PR or trying something weird and new. So come back soon. I love you guys so much and thank you for hanging out with me. I will see you in my next video. Mwah.